Good day, Grade 9 learners, and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. You're tuned into your second lesson of Term 2, and today we'll be looking more deeply into the concept of debtors, specifically looking at source documents and journals. In the previous lesson, you learned about credit sales. Let's quickly recap on this concept and everything that goes along with it. A debtor is a person who owes money to the business when buying goods on credit. A credit invoice is the source document as proof for credit sales. A debtor's journal or DJ is the book of first entry where all credit sales are recorded for a month. Today we will be looking at the debtor's journal or DJ and the source documents that are used in accordance with it. The first document is the credit invoice. The original invoice goes to the client that bought the goods on credit from our business. The duplicate is kept by the business that has sold the good to the client. Okay, grade 9 learners, let's look at an example of a credit invoice. Number one, first you should write the invoice number. Number two, then write the date on which the transaction took place. In this case, it was the 20th of March. Thirdly, it is also important to have all the information of the client or buyer, their name and their address. Number four, complete the details of goods sold, i.e. quantity, description and unit price. Fifth, multiply quantity by the unit price and write the total amount under the column for amount. Lastly, number six, add all the amounts and write the total amount owed. Okay, let's look at this example once again. Okay, let's look at the debtor's journal. Now remember grade 9 learners, we use the debtor's journal when someone has bought goods on credit. The heading of the debtor's journal must state the following. Firstly, the name of the journal. Secondly, the name of the business. Thirdly, month and year. And lastly, folio number, which is your first journal when starting a business will be DJ1. The next will be DJ2 and so on. All right, so let's look at the different columns. You will remember some of these ones from the other source documents we've done on the previous lessons. Firstly, document number will be the first column. This is the source document that was used. For example, when an invoice was issued, you will write the number of the invoice on this column. Note that the invoice numbers will be in a numerical order. If the first one is 01, then the next one will be 02 and so forth. Secondly, the second column is the day column. It is used to write the day on which the transaction took place. Thirdly, the debtors. The debtors column is used to write the name of a person or business to which the goods were sold on credit. As we already know, this person or business is called the debtor. Fourthly, the folio column is for the folio number. It is used for cross-reference, i.e., to show the number of the account in the debtor's ledger. This will make more sense later when I will be explaining more on the debtor's ledger. Fifth, in the sales column, we will record the total selling price of goods sold on credit. Sixth, the cost of sales. The total cost for the goods sold is shown here. This can be given or you may be required to calculate it. These calculations are something you already know how to do. Seventh, or the last one, is DJ1, debtor's journal number one. This is the folio number of the journal, D for debtors, J for journal, and one for the specific number of the journal. So let's run through the debtor's journal once again. Let's look at the practical example or two to see how this theory comes to life. We will be looking at Ikasi Kofu company. They are using a profit markup of 20% on cost. The first example is as follows. Goods were sold to Femi traders for 4,800 Rand on credit. Issued invoice number 57. Remember grade 9 learners, before we look at an example, we first have to stop 
evaluate and look at the key words in the example. In this example, the key words are credit and invoice, and this identifies as a DJ, a debtor's journal. The invoice number is 57. The day was the 4th. Folio will only be recorded when we learn about the debtor's journal. The sales column is 4,800 rand. All of this information was given to us. We now have to calculate the cost of sales column ourselves. Do you remember that formula? So grade nines, when you see cost of sales, think grid. Firstly, you should draw the grid. Remember cost price CP plus profit margin equals the selling price. Remember the cost price is always a hundred percent. In this case, the profit margin was 20%, which means the selling price is 120%. After you have recorded the grid, you should use the formula. In this case, the unknown is the cost price and the known is the selling price. 4,800 Rand times a hundred divided by 120. That equals to 4,000 Rand. So this means the cost of sale is 4,000 Rand. Let's look at another example. Sold goods on credit for 3,600 Rand to Hakim suppliers. Before we rush into the example, remember we have to stop evaluate and look at the key words in the transaction. The word credit means the transaction should be recorded on what? Three, two, one, on the debtor's journal, the DJ. The previous invoice number was 57. So that means that this one will be 58. Then it's the date, debtor's name, sales column. Let's see if you can calculate the cost of sales column. The answer is 3,000 Rand. Did you get that answer correct? Don't worry if you haven't gotten yet. Let's do this example together. Remember, it's unknown divided by the known. 3,600 Rand times 100 divided by 120. That equals to 3,000 Rand. Okay, you're now on your own grade nines. The next two transactions you should do by yourself. All right, grade nine learners, here's the table behind me. Press that pause button and fill up the table by yourself. Three, two, one, let's go. All right, grade nine learners, now this is the answer. This is how your table should look like. Now let's look at the second example and see if you will get it correct. Three, two, one, let's go. All right, grade nine learners, that is the second table. If you got it correct, well done. If you're still struggling, go through the examples once again and I'm sure you'll be all sorted. Okay, so what happens if the debtor completely pays off the account? If the debtor settles the account, the business receives money and the receipt is issued. The original receipt is given to the customer and the duplicate serves as the source document for the business, which is used as a first entry. Money is received, so the transaction should be recorded on the cash receipts journal, CRJ. An analysis column for debtors control will be opened as debtors pay their debt. Let's do a recap on the receipt layout as you've already have done on the previous lessons. Let's look at the receipt behind me. Once again, the date, receipt number, debtor's name, the amount and our business name is very important information that should be on a receipt. Let's look at the example below and see what this transaction looks like. Received 1,500 Rand on the 2nd of March 2022 from D. Dakarai as partial payment on his account. Issue receipt 34. Now remember grade nines, before we start this example, we have to stop, evaluate and circle the most important words on this transaction. The words received, partial payment and receipt number all indicate that the debtor has paid off his account or at least a part of it. You will see that there is an extra column in the CRJ named the debtor's control. This is the column that you will use to record when debtors pay their credit. The receipt number should be recorded on the doc column. The date the receipt was issued. The date the receipt was issued is the 2nd of March. The name of the debtor is D. Dakarai in this case and the total amount of the receipt 1,500 Rand which will be recorded in the analysis of receipt, bank and debtors control column. Let's look at the transaction one more time.
All right, grade nines, this brings us to the end of lesson two. Today, we looked at the debtor's journal and the source documents that go along with it. In the next lesson, we'll be exploring the posting of the DJ into the general ledger. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, check the self-marking assessment and the Google Slides below.